Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship today at Zion Lutheran Church. It is Sunday, January 7th, 2024. We still have all of our Christmas stuff up. A lot of people have put it away already. If you've ever heard of the 12 days of Christmas, those 12 days go until yesterday, which was the 6th of January, which is the day of Epiphany. And today at Zion, we're celebrating Epiphany. And Epiphany is sometimes called the Gentiles Christmas, because that's the day that God revealed Jesus as the Savior of the world by leading those wise men, those Gentiles, to Jesus to to also let them know that they were being saved by Jesus and coming into this world. So today we are still celebrating Christmas. It is an important thing to remember that Jesus is our Savior all year round and not just for a few days or even a couple of weeks, but always. And so today we continue to celebrate the fact that Jesus was sent to the world to be the Savior of all people. As we worship today, we'll be following the order of service that's printed for you in your worship folder. This is one of the settings that's in our new hymnal. We haven't been using those liturgies much, but this setting is based on a a liturgy that you're very familiar with because it was in CW before this and it was in the new service settings. So you're going to recognize a lot of the music in here, but it'll be just a slightly different format in, in the service as we go through it. So follow along, you'll be fine in singing and worshiping today through this new setting of the worship service. We'll begin with our opening hymn, number 372, As With Gladness, Men of Old. Please stand. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. 
Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature. I have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the house. on earth, Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God, glory to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, by the leading of a star, you once made known to the nations your one and only Son. Guide us also 
who know him now by faith to come at last to the perfect joy of your heavenly glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson on this Sunday that we're celebrating Epiphany is recorded for us in Numbers chapter 24, verses 15 to 17. It will help you to understand these words to know a little bit about the context. You might remember from your Bible history that there was a prophet once who had a donkey speak to him. That was the prophet Balaam, and he wasn't really a prophet of God. He was a prophet of false gods, but God used him when Balak, the king of Moab, wanted him to come and curse Israel. God saw to it that what he spoke was only what the Lord wanted him to speak, and in fact filled his mouth with the Holy Spirit so that he could speak the amazing prophecy that we have in our text for today, a prophecy that reached down to the time of the Messiah. So we are reading from Balaam's words, but they are the prophecy that the Lord gave him. Then he spoke his message. The prophecy of Balaam, son of Beor, the prophecy of one whose eye sees clearly, the prophecy of one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate and whose eyes are opened. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll join in singing Psalm 72, a psalm which praises this great king who is coming. We'll join to sing it in unison. the King with your justice, O God, the Royal Son with your righteousness. May he endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon through all generations. May he be like rain falling on a mown field like showers watering the earth. In his days may the righteous flourish, and prosperity abound till the moon is no more. Lord, every nation on earth will adore kings bow down to him, and all nations serve him. Long may he live, may gold from Sheba be given him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him gifts. May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. Then all nations will be blessed through him, and they will call, call him blessed. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be Amen Lord every nation on earth will adore you Our second lesson for today is recorded for us in Paul's letter to the Christians in the city of Rome selected verses there I am talking to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I take pride in my ministry, in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection brought reconciliation to the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies for your sake. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. The word of the Lord. Please stand. We'll join in our gospel acclamation. Please note that the congregation sings the refrain and I'll sing the tone. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel appointed for this Sunday is recorded in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, <coughs> chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 12. And this account will be the focus of our meditation on God's Word later in our service today. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, 
they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We continue with our hymn of the day, number 370, How Lovely Shines the Morning Star. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The word of God that we're going to meditate on, as I mentioned, are the words from the gospel lesson. Let us bow our heads in a prayer. O Lord, we eagerly look for our Savior. Lead us to him as you did the Magi, that we may rejoice in him and continue to worship him in our lives. We pray this in his name. Amen. Dear friends, we've come across this word 
before. It's a Greek word, but it's a word that isn't often translated in our English Bibles. And that's because it's a Greek word that has a meaning that's kind of hard to put into our English. It might come out something like, look! And when it's written by the authors of our Greek text, like Matthew today, he means to bring something important to our attention, to tell us this is very important, it's noteworthy, it's remarkable. And Matthew this morning uses that Greek word two times in this account about the Magi's visit to Jerusalem and to Jesus. And today we want to look at those two times that he uses it in particular to see what's so remarkable that Matthew wants us to take such note of. And then we want to see that putting those two things together brings us to a very important truth of God's word. Look whom the Lord is leading to worship Jesus. So here's the first one. It comes in the very first verse, and I'll kind of translate it so that you can see where it comes. So it would begin, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the reign of King Herod, look, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. If there was ever a Jewish city in the world, it's Jerusalem the long-time capital of the Jews, the place where the Jews would always come to worship. If you were to say that a foreigner might be pretty obvious in Jerusalem, you wouldn't be overstating. And here we have these foreigners. Look, they're coming to Jerusalem. Who are they? Well, look. They're magi. Magi. We have come to know them as the wise men from our Christmas stories that we hear so much about. But magi is an ancient term that probably originally comes from the idea of a priestly caste. So these probably were people who were involved with some kind of the religion of their land, but they are also sort of scientists. They are ones who like to explore the stars, astronomy and astrology and that kind of thing. We get our word magician or magic from this word magi, only we get it from a later use of the word which focused on the dark arts and sorcery. But at this time, it was probably more just in line of being a a scientist or a philosopher and yet connected with the worship life of the people of that time. So these are the magi who come, and where are they from? They're from the east. Matthew doesn't tell us more than that. He simply says, from the east. We don't know exactly where they came from. There are suggestions, maybe Babylon, maybe Persia. Some have suggested Arabia because of the gifts that they brought. But what's really important, the reason Matthew says, look, is because these are Gentiles. They are non-Jews. And they're coming to the capital of the Jews And these Gentiles are looking for the king of the Jews. They know he has been born. They know that he's the king of the Jews. They're not asking about that. They're telling Jerusalem, your king has been born. Tell us where he is. And then Matthew adds that little detail that's another thing that would cause us to go look because he tells us this happened during the reign of King Jesus. Herod. King Herod is not a Jew. He's king of the Jews in Jerusalem because he was placed there against the wishes of the Jews by the Romans. And King Herod is one of the most ruthless and wicked kings ever to live. He was so jealous of his rule that he even put to death his own wife and his children to keep them from taking his rule from him. It's not surprising that Matthew tells us that when the word got out that these guys are looking for the king of the Jews, he's disturbed. And it's not surprising that the people of Jerusalem may be somewhat disturbed too because they're probably afraid of the bloodbath that's going to take place when he finds out that somebody is there that might be challenging his throne. But maybe what 
Matthew also wants to call our attention to is the fact that even though these men are looking for the king of the Jews, the Jews who are in Jerusalem don't seem to be that much interested. Herod wants to know where this king is, and so he gathers the leaders of the Jews and says, where is this Messiah? And notice the word that Herod uses. He uses that Old Testament word that means the anointed one, the one who's coming to be king and savior of God's people. He says, where is this Messiah going to be born? Well, the Jewish leaders say, well, in, in Bethlehem. We know that. It's in God's word. Look, right here in Micah, it says, Bethlehem is the place that he's going to be born and he's going to be a king and he's going to be the shepherd of God's people. Well, Herod, that devious, deceitful man, he goes back secretly to the Magi and finds out how long it is they've been traveling and then he uses them as his henchmen to go and do his dirty work. He says, you find the baby, then you find this newborn king and then you come tell me so that I can worship him. Of course, he wanted to kill him, right? But what we are surprised at, what those magi probably were caught off guard by, was the fact of how uninterested these Jews were about their king being born. They knew from the scriptures that he was going to be born in Bethlehem. They knew from the scriptures this was their king. He was going to be the shepherd of God's people. But we don't hear about any of them going with them to Bethlehem. We don't hear about any of them seeming to be interested in going to see if they can find this king and maybe even protect him from Herod. It seems that the Jews are too busy with their own lives and too busy doing the things they want to do to worry about what God's word says, to believe it and actually live according to it and act according to it in their lives. But here we have these Gentiles who do believe, and they act on their belief. They've traveled thousands of miles to come to see this king. They've left their home. They've left their families. They've brought expensive gifts with which to honor him. The Jews didn't believe what was said about the king of the Jews. But these foreigners, these Gentiles, did. Oh, dear friends, there's, there's something for us to pay attention here to, isn't there? Do we hear God's word in our lives, but we're too busy with things that are going on, too busy with things that are so important in our lives that we don't really believe what he says and act on that in our lives? Matthew is here telling us, look at these foreigners. Look at these Gentiles. See how they believed. See how it made a difference in their life. And you too, believe. Listen to what God's word says. Believe it and make that the most important thing in your life. Now comes the second look that's in our text. It comes when Matthew tells us, after they had heard the king, they went on their way and look, a star the star which they had seen when it rose going ahead of them until it stopped at the very place where the child was. Look, Matthew says, this is a no ordinary star. This is a special star. You might remember that this star is the one that these wise men, the magi, saw when they were back in the east to start with. It was this star when it rose that, that appeared that they had followed, at least at the beginning of their journey, leading them to the west. And they went to Jerusalem thinking that's the most logical place for the king of the Jews to be born. Somehow, they connected that star that they saw with the coming of the king of the Jews. And somehow they understood that this king of the Jews wasn't just the king of the Jews. He was also their king, that they should worship. How could that be? We don't know for sure. Some have suggested maybe that first reading that we had might be something that connected this Savior with a star. We don't know for sure, but we do know somehow they came in contact with God's word. And that's what they believed. 
And that's not surprising because God had sent his people over to the east in captivity to Babylon. And undoubtedly, the true believers in Babylon had continued to share that message of God's word with the people in the east so that they could have heard the message about Jesus, about the Messiah. And now they came looking for that Messiah. And then Matthew comes along with his, look, the star appears again. Evidently, it had disappeared for a little while. But now that star appears again, and it leads them directly to the house in Bethlehem where the child is. This is no ordinary star. This is not some convergence, some alignment of the planets in the universe at just this time. This is a tool of God himself. He is leading these wise men, these magi, to the place where his son is. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it amazing that God wanted these wise men, these foreigners, these Gentiles, to come and see his son because he had come for them too. And that star led them right to him. He was there. He's still a baby. He's with his lowly mother Mary. And what did these wise men these influential men, these men of means, what did they do? When they got to this dusty little village, to this unremarkable house in that vineyard, they got down on their knees and they worshipped an unremarkable baby. And then they took out their treasures, expensive awesome treasures, and gave them to this baby. Why? Because God had led them to their Savior. They didn't know all the details of Jesus' life yet, but they knew what God had revealed to them. And God had brought them here. That's why he sent that amazing star, so that they would come here to this Savior, to Jesus. And even though the Apostle Paul says about people who are called Gentiles that they are foreigners to the covenant of God's promises, that they were without God in the world, yet God here is showing that Jesus came to die for them too and that their sins were forgiven and they could be part of God's family by faith. Friends, that's why today is so important to you and me. Because just like those magi, most of us are not people who have Abraham's blood in our family line. And like those magi, we are all sinners who don't deserve in any way to be part of God's family because of our sins. But look, God has led us just like those magi to the manger of our Savior Jesus. He's led us through his word, the word that we've just celebrated that is good news for all people. He leads us to that Savior through our baptism, through the Lord's Supper, to see that our sins are forgiven, that we also are part of God's family through faith in this little baby, this Savior who came for us. God wants all people, including us, to be saved. And so we also get to be stars in our lives, stars that lead other people to Jesus. And we can be stars by sharing God's word. We can say to people, look, that's not just a little baby in that manger. It's the Son of God who came to save us from our sins. The Bible says that. We can say, look, believe everything that the Bible says because there it tells us that this is the Savior of the world and he saved you too. Look, whom God is leading to Jesus, everyone, because Jesus came to save all people. Amen.
please stand. We join now in singing, or, or confessing our faith, rather, according to the words of the Nicene Creed printed in your worship folder. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with our prayer of the church. It's a responsive prayer printed in your worship folder. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God and Mary's Son, in the fullness of time, you came into our world to save us from sin and death. Beloved Son of the Father, revered by the Magi, baptized by John, you came preaching and teaching, healing and comforting, forgiving and encouraging. Prince of Peace, shine like a beacon for us and the people of our world. Let the good news of salvation be heard in the remotest corners of the earth. Open our own lips to speak your name to those around us who still live without faith or hope. Lord of the Church, let your peace rule our hearts that we may use our gifts to serve you and each other in willing gratitude and joy. Watch over our loved ones near and far that they may remember your love and rejoice in your salvation. Strengthen the faith of the sick and the disheartened. We especially pray today, first of all, for Maura Seward and Lisa Steele who are still struggling against in illnesses that have affected their bodies. If it is your will, O oh Lord, we ask you to give healing to them. Let the doctors that are tending them be able to help them and take away some of the pain and suffering. But especially we ask you to keep them strong in their faith, to trust you at all times and in all things, that you are with them and will never leave or forsake them. We pray also for Gary Shellam as he consider, continues to recover from his fall recently. We ask that you would give him back his strength, O oh Lord, again, that he can go home again. We ask you to continue to support him and sustain his faith also so that he may trust in you and know that all things happen so according to your will so that he may be strengthened and continue to hope. We pray also, O oh Lord, in this world that is so full of evil, for those who were affected by the shooting in this past week. We ask that you would be with those who mourn the loss of a child. We ask you also to be with those who have young ones who have been injured and are in the hospital. We pray also for those who have been affected by the terrible earthquake that happened in Japan. We ask that you would be with all of those who are suffering everywhere in our world. 
Let your mercy and compassion be upon us. Remember that we are but dust and be merciful to us. Especially help us to bring that gospel message, the only thing that can change hearts and help us to live at peace with one another. Give hope to those in despair and comfort those who mourn. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Finally, bring us and all your believers to the heavenly home where we will stand in the full light of your glory and with all your saints and angels sing the everlasting song of triumph. Amen. This time I remind you that in gratitude for all that our Lord has done for us, we bring our offerings that God has blessed us with so that we can continue the work of reaching out here in this area of the world as well as through our synod in the entire world. You may bring your offerings and place them in the plate at the back of our chapel or use the electronic means that are indicated in our worship folder. Invite you now to please stand as we continue with the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lived among us as a human being and revealed his glory as your only Son, full of grace and truth. Therefore, with all the angels on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, and we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated and come forward to receive Jesus' body and blood as directed.
Please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet you have given us in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. We sing our final hymn, which is number 344, What Child Is This? Welcome again to all of you to our worship service. Special welcome to our guests who are with us. Special welcome also to those of you who have joined us for the first time perhaps on our live stream. We're glad that you could join us. We hope that you'll come and join us again in the future to hear of God's incredible, remarkable love for us. One thing I call your attention to is the um, barometer or thermometer or whatever you want to call it in your worship folders about our uh, build, or elevator fund. You'll notice that we're down to just about $5,000. Thank the Lord for the blessings that we've received, and let's see if we can just finish this off now so that we can continue on with that project. The Lord has blessed us and will continue to bless us, God willing. Then also, just one small change in the, what was indicated in the worship folder this morning. The refreshments are provided by the Nelson family in honor of Jay Nelson's birthday. So uh, please take that note and come downstairs and wish Jay happy birthday and also have some cake and, and refreshments downstairs. 
One other thing is after Bible class today, which we will be having downstairs also after our refreshments, we will um, take down the trees and some of those uh, decorations. So if you can stay for a little bit today, it won't take us long to get them all down if we have lots of help and we can be done with that and go on our various ways. So if you can, stay and help with that today. May God bless you through the week.